You're searching for an editing program that won't break the bank and that has all the features and even more than Premiere Pro and Final Cut? Well, then make sure to watch this video. Hey, what's up guys? Julian from SmartphoneFilmmakingPro.com here, the ultimate online course about smartphone filmmaking. And today I have a very exciting video for you guys. Today I will show you an editing software that works on Macs and also on PCs. And basically it has all the same features like the big boys, so like Premiere Pro and also like Final Cut Pro 10. But this won't break the bank and in some aspects this even has features that not even these two programs have. And yeah, in some aspects I even like Filmora better than the other programs. In filmmaking, the editing process often gets overlooked. People always focus on the best camera, the best lenses, lighting and all that stuff, but the editing part often gets lagged behind. But basically in filmmaking, you always tell your story twice. Once when you're shooting your story and also when you're editing your story. Filmora 11 is a great alternative to Premiere Pro and also to Final Cut and also to VN. I think this is the next step up to VN. It has a lot more options and it's a more proper software compared to VN and it costs less than $100 per year and basically you can do screen screening, you can do proper color grading, you also can import LUTs, you can set keyframes, you can do really really cool speed ramping and basically you can do everything that you will ever want. In this video I'll give you an overview, so let's check it out. So I would say without any further ado, let's now hop into Filmora 11. I will give you an overview, I will show you how the program works, where you can find all the different things and basically just how the program works. So this is what the program looks like when you open it up. You have a few different options. You can create a new project, you can open a recent project, so in case you have already been working on some projects. Then on top here you can select the aspect ratio, so you can make a normal 16 by 9 video, a one by one um, specifically for Instagram, 9 by 16 works best for Instagram Reels or also for TikToks for example, and so on. And there you also have a few other options like I have mentioned before. And I think something like the screen recorder, for example, is just a really nice add-on because if you were using ScreenFlow, for example, on a Mac, I think that the cost for ScreenFlow alone, so just so that you have the ability to record your screen, would be pretty much identical from the cost to this program. And this also is a full-on editing program. So yeah, there you have it. Then you also can make an auto reframe sequence that comes very much in handy when you have shot a video in 16 by 9 for example and then you want to create a version for Instagram and then you have a few other options but we will now just open a new project and yeah this is what the editor looks like I think it looks kind of similar to Premiere Pro and also to Final Cut to all the you know bigger editing softwares that we know um, yeah, I'll just, you know, walk you through the entire program in a minute, but let's begin with importing footage. And you can do this by pressing Command I or just, you know, tapping here. And I'll just import a few clips from my last holiday. So yeah, let's just import all of these. So there you have the footage now. You can scroll through it. You can preview the footage just by double tapping on it. And in case you wanna start editing, just take the video and drag it down into the timeline. And that's also something that is really cool. If you drag it into the timeline, it asks you what frame rate and what resolution you would like to have for your project. So by default, it was set to 10, 920 by 1080. So just a standard full HD timeline. But for this test video, I wanna make it a 4K timeline and I wanna make it a 60 frames per second timeline. I wanna make it, you know, super hyper realistic. So I'll just tap on that. And just something that is very cool and very important to know in case you want to change that in case you accidentally for example have a 60 frames per second timeline just go to file project settings and there you can change the frame rate to you know whatever you like and you can also change the resolution. So this is what the editor looks like. I think it looks kind of similar to Final Cut and also to Premiere Pro. At the bottom here, you have your timeline, you have several different layers, and basically it works like in Photoshop where you have all the different layers, and depending on what's you know at the top, this will be the video that you can actually see. And in case you do not have enough layers, you can just go on this little plus icon, add a video layer, and there you go, there you have another one. Um, 
Yeah, at the top here, you have several different options. Um, we are now here in the My Media option, and this is where you can you know, import all your different video clips and your photos and music and all of that stuff. Next to that is Stock Media. So yeah, actually, this is connected to different stock video sites like Jiffy and, and Pixabay and Unsplash and so on. Next up here, we have Audio. There you also have different you know, songs that you can take. To be honest, I'm not sure if these are royalty free and if you can just take them as they are, um, you would have to check this on their website. I'm not you know, 100% sure about that. Next up, we have titles. This is actually something that is really cool because yeah, actually I think they look kind of modern and you can actually use them um, with Premiere Pro, for example. I think the, the default titles that you have within Premiere Pro, they are absolute garbage. They look like you know a kindergarten movie, but with these, they actually look actually kind of modern and I like using them, but I will actually show you in a minute how this works. Next up, you have transitions. So in case you have two clips and you want to uh, transition from one clip to another, you basically just drag and drop that onto the, the two different clips or also onto one clip, um, depending on how you want to use it. Next up, we have different effects. So there, these are some overlays and yeah, it's just, just different effects, um, but also that I'll show you in a minute. Then elements is also something that is really cool. Um, also something that I have not seen in Premiere Pro or also not in Final Cut, I think. There you have several different presets that you can take. So for example, in case, you know, with our company, we're currently working on a podcast. So in case I want to make an intro for my podcast, I can just drag and drop this icon down here. Then I can make a right click and go to show properties. I can scale it down a little bit. I could change the position, but I think that's just fine. And now if we play it back, you can see that there actually is a cool little icon with an animation. And yeah, you could actually use this for an intro and you could of course also add a transition. So yeah, it's just very cool that you have these options directly built into the software. I think you know, probably not all of them will be very usable, but some of them are just you know, really handy. And yeah, also a countdown. Um, I have been, I, I would have needed this a ton in the past. So yeah, it's just nice that you have several different options built in directly into the software. And at the very right here, you have split screen. And basically that's also a really cool option to just make a split screen, which is super simple. I will just show you right now how this works. So I just picked um, a video with six different videos and then you just take whatever video you might, might like and just drag it over to different um, videos, however you like it. I'm just doing anything just to show you how this would work. And of course, you could also change the rotation and the positioning and all that, however you like. But now you have a, a split screen video and I actually need to turn off my audio. You can do this, by the way, by just turning down the audio here. And now if we play it back, you can see that we have six different videos. My computer is struggling a little bit with having six different videos playing simultaneously, but that's just fine. But usually if you would do something like this within Premiere Pro, for example, you would have to scale everything manually and also add these transitions that there are manually. So yeah, for these kind of things, it's just much easier to do it with this program and it also works just much faster. But I'll just delete this for now and also the little icon. So I will now just show you some more options that you can do with this program and some of my favorite aspects of this program. So I will delete this clip now and import another one just to show you some cool aspects of this program and some of the things that I like about it. So yeah, let's take this shot, for example. Um, it's a nice shot just after sunset. And for example, if we wanna uh, make a color correction, we could either make a right click and then go to color correction, or we could also just tap this little icon right here. 
and then go to color correction. Then this window pops up here and then you have several different options and there you actually have several different presets like 007 from James Bond and Harry Potter and Mission Impossible. And yeah, there are just many different options and some of them actually look pretty cool, I think. But I have already imported a lot that I have created for my students off Smartphone Filmmaking Pro, which is our ultimate online course about smartphone filmmaking. So I just go to custom and select SFP LUT. And yeah, as you can see, I just tap on that, say OK. And now we have a, yeah, a final color graded image. Um, I have created this in the way that my students can use it just with a simple drag and drop. And I think that's looking very, very good. Another thing that I really like with this program is the way and how you can make speed ramps because making speed ramps is a very cool technique to spice up your edits overall because that's actually something that I see very, very often with my students off Smartphone Filmmaking Pro, that their videos are just super long and that they get boring. And one way to make them more interesting for the viewers is just to add some speed ramps. And a speed ramp basically is um, when you speed up a portion of the video, and you still have basically all the information left. And we can actually do that just by selecting the clip here in the timeline. Then we tap on this icon, which says speed, just tap on it once. And then you have several different options. You can make it slow, fast, normal, squeeze, freeze frame. And we can also do speed ramping. And you can only do that within the paid version of this program, but it's actually well worth it. You have just like in VN editor, you have several different um, presets that you can pick from um, yeah there are actually even more but what I like to do is I like to customize my clip and that's very cool because this is basically the duration of the clip and then you can just you know you can say just begin very fast then slow down then we get fast again and then we end the clip getting slower and slower so that's just one way of you know adding a, a keyframe and speed ramps um, that's probably not looking good now for this clip, but I think you get the point here. And yeah, it's just very cool the way how you can do this. And with this way, you can also do very easily some speed ramp transitions. And yeah, the way on how this works with this program is just really, really nice. Another thing that I want to show you are the different transitions, because like I said before, I think they are looking very cool um, with this program compared to um, Premiere Pro, for example. Um, but first I want to add a color correction to this clip because that's looking a little flat in my opinion. So we just make a right click, go to color correction, go to custom, tap on SFP LUTs and take a look on how the image changes. And that's looking way better in my opinion. There's just much more contrast, the colors pop way more and I just really like this image. So let's tap on OK. And then we set an in point where the movement is already going. So we can make a cut just by tapping on this little scissor icon here. Then we delete this portion of the clip. It automatically brings the rest of the clip to the other clip. So there is no gap like you have within Premiere Pro, for example. And then we go to transitions. And there you have several different options. Actually, you have very, very many different options. And to be honest, most of them I'm not a big fan of. So let's, you know, for example, take this one. This is called Pixelate. So let's play this back. And these kind of transitions very much remind me of the Windows Movie Maker. And I just don't feel like they are professional, to be honest. So I'm not a big fan of these. There are some zoom transitions that are not that bad. But what I actually like are these kind of transitions where you actually have some elements in the shot. And if we play that back now, I think that this is looking way cooler than, you know, all the other uh, transitions that you have up there. And yeah, let's pick another one. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's try this out. Maybe let's play it back. Yeah, I think that these transitions, they look very cool. They add just some, I don't know, some modern effect to the images. Probably it's not the best transition for these holiday videos that I'm making right now. But generally speaking, I feel like they have some very, very modern transitions. And the next thing that I want to show you are the titles. I have also talked about them before. 
Um, yeah, again, there are also many different options that you have here. Um, and some of them also look very, very modern. Um, I don't know, let's pick that one, for example, and you use it just by drag and dropping it to the timeline. And then we let's just play it back. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty nice. And we can, of course, change the duration just by dragging that over. And if we play that back, that's probably not the best way to use it because um, it's not rendered. So let's play it back here. And yeah, I think that's looking pretty nice. And you can, of course, just change the text just by show properties. And then you can here dial in the, the font that you like, the size that you like, and of course, also the text. And yeah, you can change everything that you like. And yeah, I think that's that's a pretty cool way of doing that. And that is working just fine. In case you're doing interviews or something like this and you need a lower thirds animation, you can also just drag and drop that into the frame. And then you have a little lower third animation. Um, I would change the font here to something that's not looking as gimmicky. But like I said before, generally speaking, I think that these presets that there are here are looking pretty damn good. So by the time you are done with editing your video, by the time you have added all the titles, all the effects, all the color correction and basically everything, you can of course also export your video to be able to upload them to YouTube, Instagram, whatever you wanna do. And you can do that just by tapping here on export and then go to create video. And then this window here pops up and then you can, um, yeah, basically you can, you have several different options on how you can um, export the video. What I like to do is I like to just go to format, um, leave it at, at MOV or MP4. And then um, here you can change the name. Uh, you can just type in whatever you like. Next up here, you can change where the video should be saved. So just pick whatever you like. And there you have the resolution. And then if we go to settings, you can change the bit rate and also the frame rate. So you can yeah dial in basically whatever you like. You also have some presets. So um, quality you have good, better and best. And depending on what you pick, of course, also your file size gets bigger. And in case you need the absolute best quality possible, you can also pick ProRes and so on. And by the time you're done picking all your settings, just tap on export and you are good to go. But there you have it, guys. That's a quick overview over the app Filmora 11. And like I said before, I think that this program basically offers everything that you will ever need. I personally, I'm using a M1 Pro MacBook Pro and it's very well optimized for that machine. So in case you're an Apple user and you're using an M1 chip, this is working very, very nice. But it also works for Windows users. And yeah, it also works with the Intel Macs, of course. And yeah, like I said before, it offers everything that you will ever need. So in case you're searching for an easy to use yet super powerful editing program, I can very much recommend that you check it out. In the video description below, you will get a link to their website and they also have a free trial that you can use. And yeah, in case you have any more questions, make sure to let me know and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.